Hi, I'm Robert Crowe from Leading for Purpose and welcome to this series of Governance Fundamentals for Not-for-Profit Chairs. Today we're going to talk about one of the essentials of NFP governance and that is board makeup. You know, it forms part of an important part of the people side of your governance role. And uh, I think it's one of the core foundations for a successful board and a prosperous board as well, making sure that you're getting that uh, board makeup right. So some of the things that you should be thinking about as part of your role, putting that board together, is the first thing, and I think it's one of the cornerstones of any good board, is making sure that you have a capable and committed chair. Now, in lots of not-profit organisations, the chair is probably that linchpin, um, but not everyone has the right skills to, um, to chair a board. And so making sure that those skills are either in place or you're developing them over time as well. But you know, it's kind of one of the corner, the cornerstones, making sure that chair is capable and committed, that they can commit the time. Making sure that the roles and responsibilities of your directors and committees are defined, um, you know, in whatever way you define them, whether it's through policy, uh, whether it's through procedures, etc. So making sure that those roles and responsibilities are laid out for the people in the organisation and they should be uh, communicated during things like in the board induction as well. Try and get a balance across your board. Now this can be hard, you know, you're thinking about skills, depending on the type of organisation that you have, you're looking at personalities, uh, diversity, if you have an organization that needs to reflect diversity or even you know reflect your client base making sure um, that that is reflective in the board the other thing is geography if you have an organization that is geographically dispersed across across your country or your state um, making sure that you know there is is um, a reflected representative on the actual board itself now this can be tough and I'm not saying that you have to try and get every single nuance right. Remember, diversity can also be reflected, you know, in your uh, committees as well. So it doesn't always have to be on the board. The other thing is making sure that the board demonstrates and reflects the organisational's culture. You know, so making sure that that purpose, what is the organisation about, does the board reflect that? You know, I've, uh, one of the things I warn against is making your board your not-for-profit board to corporatize, you know, making sure that it still has that empathy, still has that understanding for the clients and what the organization is, is trying to achieve because uh, there can be some nuances there and some things around risk and uh, risk appetite that you know need to be discussed from an empathetic point of view and a client point of view. You should be managing your board turnover, so aiming for about 20 to 30% a year. Um, it not only renews your board, but it also makes sure that um, the skills that you need are coming into you know, a new strategic planning process or a new strategic um, cycle. Um, but it also makes sure that you are cycling through you know, all those diversity issues that we were talking about. Um, so you know, making sure the turnover is managed. And for you as a chair, sometimes you can have people that just hang on too long they see it as a part-time job or their retirement job. You know, you've got to try and um, try and manage that. And certainly, um, you know, not just getting rid of people, but you might move people into committees um, or to, to working committees as well from the board itself. Um, making sure that the bills, makeup and skills are linked to your strategy. So where do we need to go? But also where is where are we now as an organisation? You know, think about what are the skills you need now and then what skills do we need to push us in into the future to meet our strategic needs. So those sort of things should be taken into consideration as well. Again, it can be tough and not every single skill might be represented on the board, um, but you should be linking it to your strategy. What are we trying to achieve? What have we committed to? Um, and how are we going to get from A to B um, with that strategy? You also might need to link those skills to today's challenges. You know, you might be going through legislative changes, you might be going through product uh, changes, you might be divesting um, yourself of services um, across the board. 
could be lots of things happening. So those skills for today are just as important as well. Um, the other thing is making sure that the board members commitment is demonstrated, you know, through participation, whether it's at board meetings or whether it's at um, committee meetings or whether it's at other functions, AGMs, etc. So, you know, I'd, I'd be talking to your board members and saying, these are our expectations. You need you need to be turning up. You can't just join the board because you want to run your resume. Um, you have to make sure you are participating. And I have been on boards um, where the chair has said that everybody has to be part of a committee and has to um, be participating in that committee and in, in, in inputting as well. So it's quite um, strict criteria for joining the board. Um, those committees are in place, making sure they're in place and they are functioning as well. And as an NFP chair, you should be making sure that those things, you know, are turning around. Uh, making sure that the board members do have a good understanding of the organisation. You know, one of the things I try and um, recommend to board chairs uh, when you're hiring is to, to put out that requirement and saying, well, you need to go and visit the operations on a regular basis. You need to be able to talk to the senior management team independently to form your own views, uh, but also to understand and, you know, to really get that empathy and understanding for the organisation. You know, we, most organisations in the NFP sector are trying to do good, raise money uh, to do good in the community. So you need to make sure that those board members do have empathy. So um, try and beware of the board member who doesn't want to go out and spend time in the organisation. Um, I'd be very wary of that. The other thing is, just bouncing off that too, is I'm a believer that the board should be vis visible to the organisation. It shouldn't be just some mysterious group of people that meet on a regular basis and uh, determine determine their fate it should be human it should be you know part of what you're doing so making sure that you are visible to the organization meet in the organization's meeting rooms if you can um, get there early shake hands talk to people say hi um, to the organization you know i personally think it is you know very important so there's some tips around board makeup uh, I hope it's been helpful for you as an M NFP board member or, you know, if you're the NFP chair as well. And I look forward to seeing you again, again, as part of this uh, Fundamentals video series.